All right, we're here with head coach Rob Talley, uh, heading into week three at Assumption. Uh, coach, I guess just reflect a little bit. You know, he's broken down the film from last week and against St. A's. Um, it was a strong offensive performance, but you know, I think underrated was uh, the defense. I know they gave up 24 points, but forced three turnovers and certainly rectified some of the issues from week one. Yeah, I, I think really our, our defense did um, did a great job, especially in the first half. You know, where we had a game that you know till the till the final seconds was a 14-7 game. Um, you know, where they really they really hung in there. Um, um, you know, we did a really good job offensively the first drive, but then the next two we were three and out, and they had great field position, and our defense kept on fighting. So, I, you know, I really think our defense, you know, gave us an opportunity to really to to, to lead that game going into the halftime. And um, you know, in 24 points, you know, times be a lot, but versus that versus that club that's that's used to scoring so many points and is going to throw the ball um, as much as they did. Um, 24 points isn't a bad thing, you know. Especially one of those came off a turnover that gave him the ball at the 10 yard line. So, um, and we held them to I think 3.1 yards to carry. So that, that's a big stat for us defensively. And you know, um, you can't let a throwing team um, 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 run the ball also because then, then you can't stop either one. Um, it's not an offense you see a lot of in this conference. Um, the no huddle. What what does that do to you defensively that you have to kind of adjust for and be you know? Well, biggest on? thing is to me, biggest thing is communication. You know, and I think that's one reason you no know, huddle def offenses are around is because they they want to get you some really basic basic defenses and um, they want to affect your communication um, with everything that they're doing. So um, that was a big stress for us um, over the um, over the course of the week defensively is to make sure we communicated and got everything across and not to panic. You know, um, we practice a lot of you know no huddle situations throughout the week and you know I, th I think our, you know our kids were prepared for it and they were ready for it. Uh, offensively, certainly the star of the game, Logan Meyer, five touchdown passes, another one rushing. He becomes the all-time leading passer in school history. Talking about his progression, just how he's evolved now as a senior from being thrown into the fire, but way back four years ago now as a freshman, uh, as a, and, you know, kind of in, in assuming that role. Well, I think a lot of things have helped him. For, I think for one, just he's matured o over the four years, um, and, and it's important for him to be successful. So um, I think that's been a big part of it. And I think offensively, what we've done around him, I think the first couple of years he was here, um, you know, we had a couple of different, you know, systems he was in, and I, and I think that really slowed his progress down. But the last couple of years, we, we've been in the same system, and I think that's really helped him. Um, and, you know, he understands it. He understands, you know, what his reads are, what, what, what the progression is he's looking at. So, um, but once again, it's the maturity is that him studying him. And we go through a game plan meeting. He has his pen out and um, his game plan is, is pretty marked up afterwards. He wants to make sure, you know, once again, he wants to give himself the best chance to be successful and, and help the team um, in doing so. Uh, certainly some weapons around him as well have, have improved over his <laughs> career. Just talk about wide receivers this year and you know how much more skilled they've been able to make, even losing a guy like a John Gomes yeah. from last year. Well, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, to me, John Gomes, like last year was having another coach on the field. Um, and, he, and he really helped bring these get me bring a lot of these young guys along. But you have Nate Robitaille, who's you know who's a game breaker, who has, who has speed, and who's still learning the the wide receiver position, having played you know quarterback in high school. Um, then you have um, Gordon McLeod, who's the easily the hardest working receiver we have, um, who just who constantly just works in his craft, and it's it's so important for. For, uh, for for him to win and him to be successful, and then Corey White, who's a guy that's you know um, I think he had maybe eight catches in high school because um, he just didn't throw the football. Um, but you know he's a uh, he's, he's quite a talent. He's, he's a long, big, physical kid that go up and catch the ball and um, he can take it all the way. So we really have you know a bunch of kids. We have Zaire Reef, another guy that that complements that whole group where you know that, that he made he made a big grab the other night too. So. Um, the biggest thing is we have some size and we have some speed, and you know they can really stretch the field, um, you know, if, if given the opportunity. So I, I think that's the biggest difference, and it's nice for Logan to have those type of weapons. Uh, Logan kind of mentioned this uh, in going to your running back with Jamal Johnson, maybe the sentimental favorite of, on the team. Um, just talk about Jamal and you know what his involvement had to kind of bide his time and wait behind Demetrius, you know, Eddie Bashan, and okay. now he's getting that chance to shine and how he. Well, I think the biggest that. thing with Jamal and the biggest compliment you can you can give him is that 
he just went about his business. He just came and worked every day. Um, uh, I think he's a, he's a good enough back where he probably could have started a lot of different programs. Um, he just he just bit his time, didn't complain, and every opportunity he got, he just tr he tried to make the most of. And even coming into this year, then he, you know Justin Willis, uh, you know captain was penciled in at the starter, but you know he probably had his best summer, and he had easily had his best preseason camp. Um, so. You know, he prepared and he put himself in a position to be successful. So you want, you really want those guys um, to, to make the most of the opportunities because they've they've done it they've done it the right way. Uh, we talked a little bit about Brian Harrington. He's been your leading tackler the first two games. Um, leads the conference in tackles, as a matter of fact. He's a guy, another guy, to bide his time the first couple of years and work his way up from special teams. Talk about that process and what you kind of tell a kid. You know, putting your work in as a freshman, maybe a sophomore. Just, Special teams, and he's a guy like Brian who epitomizes that. He was your MVP on his special teams last year, and now he's making an impact in linebacker. Well, I think the biggest thing, you know, I think as a coach, you, you hope and you wish it was always like that, where, you know, people would come and kind of buy their time and kind of learn the system and um, kind of get their feet wet that, um, that way. But we have more and more guys that were just uh, just thrust into fire, and, and in some ways, because of lack of depth in certain positions, that's going to happen. But, you know, Brian's a kid that came in, you know, we talk about, hey, first he's getting on the bus, and, and how do you get on the bus is special teams. I mean that's really where you can where you can make an impact early, and um, I think when you talk about Brian, it's he's just such a hard worker, you know, on and off the field. It's important to him, um, and that's how he's gone about it. You know, his, his three years on the team here is that he just shows up and he works every day, and he doesn't complain about you know what's going on. He just every rep he gets, he makes the most of. Um, you know, when he was on special teams, primarily, you know, he was a he was a force on special teams for us. So, um, as I said, you, as a coach, you'd love it if, if every situation was like that because I think you know Brian really appreciates you know what he had to do to to get in the position he's in, um, and he's making the most of it. You know, he's running sideline to sideline, and um, you know I think you just love to see that. Um, you love to see that from a, from your inside linebacker. Is that someone you point to your freshmen as they're coming in and say this is the guy who did it and. Is he maybe take on a leadership role to those guys a little bit? Well, I, I think I think he takes on a leadership role naturally, just because he's such a hard worker, and you know, and he plays with emotion, and he he loves football. You know, he he, lo he loves to come out to practice. So I think naturally he he, he takes on that leadership role. Um, I, I think what adds to it, you know, we get to point as coach say, say, hey, this is where Brian started. You know, so yeah, you know, you want to start, you want to play a lot, but. You know, you might just have to put your time in, and you know, if you work hard enough, you know, it could pay. It could pay off. Uh, a little bit of a short week here, Friday night at Assumption. Uh, they're coming off a big win at ben on the road against Bentley, who was one of the preseason favorites in this conference. What do they present? New coach, uh, uh, assume a new system, but uh, kind of the same thing with them: strong defense. Well, I think, and you see, I think the biggest thing you see, you see energy really on both sides of the football. Um, they're playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. I think a lot of times you get that when you when you have a when you have a new coach, and yeah, I think you see the same faces that they had some really they have some really good football players on their team, and um, defensively, um, um, you know, they really disrupted what Bentley was trying was trying to do, and you know, offensively they they really were able to take advantage of of the Bentley defense. So. I, I think it's a it's a typical to me uh, assumption team, whereas they're hard nosed, they play hard, um, you know, and they have a lot of really good football players. So, um, you know, we're going to we're going to have our hands full uh, on Friday, and um, you know, sometimes you look at the film, you just kind of scratch your head and say, well, how how are we, how are we gonna you know defeat that? But you know, we we'll just we we'll just keep on plugging away. What do you mean? If you had the three keys uh, for set Friday night, what would they be? Well, uh, for one, I, I think just defensively they're able to apply so much pressure. So I mean, we have to protect the quarterback. You know, um, I feel we have some pretty good weapons. You know, on the perimeter, but you know, we have to be able to get the ball to them. Um, so protecting the quarterback is one thing. Um, us being able to stop their run. Um, you know, because they're, they're a little more balanced than I, I think they have been in the past. And, you know, so we, we need to be able to stop the run and get them in some, some predictable situations. And then, uh, as always, turnovers. And I think that was the biggest turning point in that game, you know, last week with Bentley is they were able to come up with two turnovers late in the game and, um, and, and then really seal the deal from there. So um, turnovers are going to be big. You know, we have to protect the football um, and, and give, us, give ourselves a chance in the fourth quarter. All right, Coach, well, uh, congratulations again on the win last week, and uh, good luck on Friday. Oh, thank you.